Hi everyone, welcome back to Watch It Played. My name is Rodney Smith. In this video, I'd like to teach you Testament, the solo variant to the game Legacy. Now, why do I want to do that? Well, I'd like to play this variant with you right here on the channel. So if you haven't already, you may wish to go back and watch the standard instructional video for the game Legacy, the Testament of Duke de Crecy. But in that video, I did make one little tiny mistake. So before we get going, join me at the table here. Let me just clear that up. I had pointed to this occupation symbol and called it the artist, but it's actually the diplomat. This is the symbol for an artist. Now, one thing I have to mention, which may be of interest to some of our longtime viewers, is that Mikhail Hendricks, the designer of Legacy, is the same M.J.E. Hendricks that participated in the first playthrough of a game we ever featured on our channel before it was even called Watch It Played. It was over three years ago, and the game was Mansions of Madness. And he made all of the gameplay decisions for the character Michael McGlenn. But it wasn't until after I'd released the instructional video for Legacy and we started talking that I made the connection, this is the same person. And I have to say, that was wildly cool. It just made featuring this game all that more special, knowing that there was a connection all the way back to the beginning of our little channel and that he'd been a part of that. Something else that's very cool as well, Portal Games, the publisher of Legacy, is going to give away a copy to one of our viewers. So to find out how to enter that contest, you're going to have to watch our solo playthrough because one of those episodes is going to contain the instructions for how you can enter. So this will be a prize for one of the people who follow along. But speaking of which, let's learn how to play this game. Things are going to change a little bit here. You're going to be presented with some new challenges. Now the game's going to take place in present day. Well, present day within the context of the game. And you are trying to research your family tree. Rumor has it a wealthy aristocrat who's passed away with a large estate may be connected to one of your ancestors. So you're going to be working to identify who your different ancestors were. And if you can uncover enough information, you'll be able to link yourself to that particular aristocrat and then receive and claim the inheritance. So let's start by taking a look at some of the changes to the setup. First, from the child deck, remove all the complication at birth and children cards with special effects. Put only three mansion and venture cards on the main board. From the mission deck, remove strengthen the Royal Navy, unrest at the court, preparing for the revolution, and found a political party. From the Friends deck, remove Angelique, Constant, Frederick, George, Catherine, Laurent, Manuel, Nathalie, Patrick, and Vera. Don't use the Patron cards. Instead of taking a random Head of Family card, choose either Patrick or Nathalie to represent you, placing the Chosen card face up in front of you, but ignoring any of these special effects. Then place Laurent and Angelique as your mother and father. Not the cutest couple, but none of us get to choose our parents. Now place a son and daughter card above each of your parents. These are your grandparents. In this variant, children cards in your family tree represent the family members you know existed, but you haven't identified yet. However, you'll be able to replace them with friend cards from your hand to signify that you have now positively identified who they were. You will use a single player board but flipped over to the solo variant side. Then, if you chose Nathalie, set your income to two, take six gold and five friends. But if you chose Patrick, set your income to one, collect five friends and nine gold. Finally, these are the hint cards. Separate them face down by generation, shuffling each pile, and then discarding two from each, returning them to the box. Then stack the cards, ensuring Generation 1 is on the top and Generation 3 is on the bottom. At the start of each generation, you'll draw three of the hint cards. These will provide you with objectives to complete in your family tree over the course of the entire game. You will lose if you have not fulfilled each objective by the end of Generation 3. So after you've revealed your first three hints, you're ready to get started. And that is the setup. But now let's take a look at how you play. First of all, any action you take, either on your personal board or on the main board, can affect any member of your family, except for you and your parents. So for example, I couldn't take an action to give a child to my parents, but I could give this child to any other member of my family. Look, even in the first round, let's say I had expanded my family tree a little bit here, and now we can see my great-grandparents 
I could give them a child. Now keep in mind what's really happening here. They didn't just get pregnant and have a child. No, I've been doing research into my family tree and I've discovered that along with having one child that was married, they also had another single child. But as the game goes on, maybe I'll find out this child was also married. Maybe they had children. This is all part of the discovery you'll be making about your family tree. And in particular, you're going to be trying to create your family tree in such a way that it fulfills the hint cards you've been provided with so far. You'll notice the side of the player board we are now using has slightly different actions. Instead of the Mary action, we now have Who Were They? This action gives you two options. First, you can take a friend card from your hand and replace any child card in your tree with it. You have now positively identified one of your family members. Or instead, you can create a spouse for one of your single family members by placing a friend card beside a known or unknown family member of the opposite sex. Regardless of which you do, you resolve all of the effects of the card as normal. So you would either pay the cost or receive a dowry and then resolve the effects listed on the card here. You then pick up the child deck and then just look through it to find a male and female child card to place above your new known family member. These represent the unknown parents of that new person. You then shuffle the child deck and put it back on the main board. So generally, you're going to be working upwards through your family tree, unless you create a couple of two known family members. For example, let's say I use the who were they action to identify this member of my family as Olga. Of course, she would have had two parents. And because this couple is now completely known, I draw the top card from the child deck to give them a random son or daughter. So it turns out my father had a brother, which means I had an uncle. The how big was my family action is very similar to the having children action of the standard game, except now you pick any couple from any generation. And these can be totally known, totally unknown, or some combination of both. Let's say we chose my grandparents once again. Well, you now give them a child from the child deck, either randomly drawn from the top, or if you're willing to spend one honor point, you can announce the gender you want and then draw from the top of the deck until you find it. So maybe I was looking for another uncle. In this variant, there's no limit to how many children a single couple can have. The how wealthy were they and whom did they know work exactly like asking friends for money and the socialize action from the standard game. Rounds progress as normal, but you will skip scoring honor points for children and for patron cards. You also skip your children growing up. And although you don't start the game with any additional action pawns at the beginning of the second and third generation, you draw a random one as normal. Remember, at the beginning of the game, we drew the hint cards for Generation 1. At the beginning of Generation 2 and Generation 3, you'll want to draw the corresponding hints. So you could use this symbol as a reminder to draw those new cards at the appropriate time. Now you'll remember I said that in order to win the game, you must complete every hint card that you draw. But the only time limit on that is by the end of the game. So for example, even though I drew these in Generation 1, I can still wait until Generation 2 or 3 to finally complete them. And now that you understand a little better how you're going to be growing your family tree, these hints will make a little more sense. For example, this one says, one of your grandfathers had a venture. So this just means before the end of the game, I'm going to want to use one of my actions to initiate a venture and then assign it to either one of my grandfathers. And it can be a known one or even an unknown one. As soon as I've done that, then I have completed the hint. And what I like to do is just flip it over as a reminder. And there is an incentive to complete your hints early if possible, because each completed hint will increase your prestige by one. So at the end of each generation, when you're scoring for your prestige points, your honor will increase that much more. Now remember, I said you can't take actions that directly affect you or your parents, but you can count them for the sake of their occupation and nationality. For example, if I added Jacoba to my family, it says to draw two face-down friends for each other craftsman in my family. Well, there's three craftsmen right there, and those would count, so I would be able to draw six face-down friends. 
At the end of the final round, you then complete the scoring. You will gain one honor for each non-French descendant whose nationality matches the nationality of at least one of its parents. But you also lose an honor point if a non-French descendant matches neither parent's nationality. This is probably easiest to understand if I just show you. First of all, this is the symbol for the French nationality, so we can ignore all family members with that symbol. But let's take a look at Olga. She's Russian, but neither of her parents are Russian. So there's something wrong with our family tree here. We're going to lose one point. Over here, Eliza is British, and she has at least one parent who's also British. So we're going to gain a point for that. If you can't establish with certainty the relationships, then your score is not adjusted. For example, although we know John is British, we haven't positively identified either of his parents, so we can't be certain if they were British, you don't gain or lose points. Even if we knew one of the parents, say his father, was Prussian. We're still not penalized because it's possible his mother was British, we just don't know yet. You also gain an honor point if you have an aristocrat in your family tree that has a parent who was a craftsman. Basically, you're being rewarded for having family members who have risen in their social standings. But you also lose a point if you have a craftsman who was the child of an aristocrat. Apparently, my father was a disappointment to the family. And then finally, you lose one honor for each unfulfilled hint. So in this case, I would lose three honor. And that's how you play the solo variant. Now, even if you don't complete all of the hints, which you need to do if you want to say that you won, you can still total up your score just to see how you did. And if you have completed all of the hints, then having a score will let you know how you did relative to other successful attempts. Personally, I haven't had any successful attempts, but that's why I'm going to play it through with your help. In the following episodes, I'm going to do a couple rounds of play and then turn over to you and ask you how you think I should use my actions to best satisfy my hints and progress the research on my family. Whichever suggestion gets the most votes from our viewers, that's what we'll come back and do. And hopefully together we'll be able to claim this massive inheritance. But until the next episode, thanks for watching.